we are uh, dedicated by our uh, special grant from the Rubin family for this segment known as for the Shabbos table and we wish that Hashem should grant them Hatzlacha and be mamale all of their desires for the good. I'd also like to dedicate the shir to my grandfather whose yard site is tonight. Uh, he passed away on Shivas Batamas at the age of 101. Menachem ben Reb Yitzchak, his neshama should have an aliyah. Um, he was a man of incredible chachma. It says, Ezel chacham haraya sanaylet. So while all of his neighbors in Budapest did not see the Malach HaMavis coming, and sadly, uh, the over 400,000 Yidden went to the gas chambers, uh, he took out his family in 1938, leaving all of his wealth behind, his mansion, his paintings, his silver, his gold. You know, in, in Kriyashma we say, V'chol nafshecha v'chol moidecha. And the Gemara says, why does it say moidecha is money? Why does it say v'chol nafshecha and then v'chol moidecha? And the Gemara says, because uh, people like their, there's some people that their money is more valuable than their life. Now it always bothered me, aren't most people not that way? Don't most people like their life more than their money? Shouldn't we say Kriyashma in the um, more common way? So the more common way is, is that you like your life more than your money. So shouldn't it say b'chol avavcha, b'chol nafshecha, b'chol moidecha, and then b'chol nafshecha? So one answer to this question, which I probably is the simple answer, is moidecha doesn't really mean money. Moidecha means ma'id, what you want very much. Now, there are things that people want more than their life. Uh, for example, a person very well would rather not live than to live like a vegetable. So he values his intellect more than his life. There are many people that would rather uh, not be in pain. So Maidecha is their, their health. The Gemara just gives one example and that is that some people like their money more than their wealth. And if somebody sticks them up, they'll take chances and not give over their wallet and make excuses and get shot. Because they're more concerned about their money than their wealth. Also, and this is very important to know, this is a good example of what happened to my grandfather's town in Budapest. The majority of the people were concerned about their money and they lost their lives. Okay, they didn't realize it, they didn't, but they couldn't, they couldn't leave their mansions. They couldn't leave their money. It takes a chacham who is roya as a That's that's a person with foresight to see, to see the winds of war. I want to just say on my grandfather's yard site, he should be a especially for my mother, Estefano uh, Baschana. She should be gesund, and the whole family. Uh, my my Zayda's daughter Edie and son Andy and the ganze mishpacha. You should be a melech I just want to say that when he was 98 years old, I asked my grandfather, in what merit did you live long? And my grandfather said two things. First of all, in his father's old age, uh, Yitzchak, when he was living in Eretz Yisrael, he said he took very good care of him. And he also said that there was a man who didn't have any family. I remember him as a little boy. His name was Mud Chalayb. And my grandfather would have him buy all the meals on Shabbos. And my grandfather who davened in the Chusta Beis Medrash, and he was already a, a, an older man, he wouldn't start his Shabbos meal until Mud Chalayb showed up. Even if he had to wait for him, he didn't ask Mud Chalayb to daven in Chusta. He didn't ask him to be there at a certain time. And he attributed his long life to that schus as well. 
In this week's parsha, uh, the uh, Kula Rebbe alerted me to an Arachaim Hakadosh. Actually, yesterday was the Arachaim Hakadosh's yard site. So the Kula Rebbe told it over to me. It's the Arachaim Hakadosh. His should be a Melitz Yosher for the Ganzer Welt. So the Arachaim Hakadosh says on the pasuk, "Lefuva Mishpacha Sapuni." This is a family. Lefuva Mishpacha Sapuni. So the Arachaim Hakadosh asks, it should say, "Where does the Nun come in?" The Nun isn't part of the family name. It should say Lefuva Mishpacha Sapuni. Not Lishpach Puni. So Arachayim HaKadosh says, Lefuva refers to the mouth. And he says that a mouth which learns Torah and is Amel Batayra, you need Puni. You need to be Mefana it. You need to clean it from any type of uh, Wasteful material. He says, even even divrei chayel, a mouth. He he quotes from Chasidei Yisrael. Now the Orachayim Hakadosh is quoting from Chasidei Yisrael. The um, in the footnote to the Oitzer Aploys, he says he suggests that this Chasidei Yisrael. That the Archaim Hakadosh is referring to is Rabbeinu Yoyna on Pirkei Avos, and the Archaim Hakadosh goes on to say that a mouth that learns Torah is considered a clay clay shores, is like a ministering vessel, because he says, "What is it? Why is why are the holy vessels of the Beis Hamikdash called clay shores? Because they catch the blood of the Karbanas, they're used for." for the meal offering of the Mincha, they're used for holy things. He says there is no Kedusha like Kedusha Tzatayra. There is no holiness like the holiness of Tyre. So he says a mouth is a clay shores. And just like a chas v'shalom, you should put anything improper in the ministering vessels of the Beis HaMikdash. We should be very careful not to have anything improper in our mouths. Now it's interesting that in the famous, one of the most famous letters, probably the most famous letter is the Geras HaRamban, but maybe second is the Geras HaGra. The Gra in his Geras, which he wrote to his family, he writes that the mouth is more than a clay shars. He calls the Pek Kodesh Kodoshim. Now also we know that there's a Rishon, which I've, I've quoted many times in the Ishiurim, because he's a uh, expert in gematrius. There are two Rishayim that are famed for their gematrius, the Rabbeinu Ephraim and the Rekech. But this is a Rabbeinu Ephraim that has nothing to do with gematria. The Rabbeinu Ephraim says that kala oimer b'mila, oimer b'ayla. Whatever it says by mila, it says by ayla. The Rabbeinu Ephraim makes a comparison, an al- analogy to the circumcision to Eila. And one of the things he says is, Eila kibel dama b'kleishares, that a burnt offering, we catch the blood in a ministering vessel, and also by Mila, the metzitza b'peh, the mayo sucks out the blood with his mouth, which is also a kleishares. So here we have this fascinating idea that a mouth that learns Torah is like a ministering vessel. A mouth, it's not a simple thing, a mouth. It's like a clay show is in the base. And, and the Gros says it's more than that. It's Kodesh Kedosh. Now there's a very famous Yushalmi in Masech des Brachas. It's actually right away in Masech des Brachas. Perik Aleph Halacha Beis. Reb Shimba Yechai, of course, Reb Shimba. Reb Shimba Yechai, the author of the Zayar. He says an incredible thing. He says that if he would have been by Har Sinai, can you imagine, imagine the imagery that he says. He says if he would have been by Har Sinai, he would have asked Hashem for two mouths. One mouth for strictly for Torah and Tefillah, and the other mouth for all other affairs, for business, for, 
for, you know, taking care of the orthodontist and the babysitter and then so Rabbi Shema Yechai was, was really uh, concerned about this idea that how could we use a mouth for mundane things when we're using it for Torah and Tefillah. However, Reb Shimba Yechai then says, I retract what I said. He says, the world is in so much trouble. The death of the 24,000 Talmud Rebbe Kiva because of Lashonara, like the Masha says. The Churban Bayashani because of Lashonara, that's with one mouth. Imagine the Churban if there would be two mouths. You see this idea and I, I, I want to tell you that I've never felt this idea more than what we say before we make the brach of Baruch Sha'amar. Now, a lot of people don't do this, but it's in the Siddur. We know Baruch Sha'amar is a very holy part of Pesuk de Zimre. It says that Baruch Sha'amar wasn't, wasn't written by a human. There was a task a plate that fell down from heaven and it had Baruch Shamar on it. Before we say Baruch Shamar, we ask, uh, we make a, a commitment. Hareini Mizamin P, I am preparing my mouth, Lodos Ula Halel Ula Shabeach to thank, to praise, and to Lord my Creator. So, Rav Segel, the Manchester Rosh Hashiva, asks, what does it mean that I'm going to prepare my mouth? So the Pashib shot is, is that you get up in the morning, you gargle with Listerine. That's what it says. It says in the morning, you should get rid of your, the Ririn Shibapeh the saliva, the stuff that's in the mouth. So that's a simple explanation of Harani Mazam and Espeh. It's a good explanation. But the Manchester Rishi Shiva says there's a deeper explanation. It says we want to daven to Hashem. We're going to ask Hashem to give us das, to give us gesund, to take away our problems, to grant us peace, to grant us parnasa, you have to prepare your mouth that it should be a suitable organ to be able to ask for this. Because says the Manchester Rosh Shiva, if it's a mouth that speaks Lashonara, if it's a mouth that yells at a wife and does a nas dvarim, saying hurtful words, especially a wife, Dimasa Mitsuya, her tears come easily. If it's a mouth that reveals secrets, it's a, if it's a mouth, God forbid, that's a tailbearer, or God forbid, a mouth that speaks nivel peh, obscenities, then how? The prosecutor can't become a defender. So this is what, this is what the Archaim HaKadosh is saying. Lefuva mishpacha sapuni. The fuva, the mouth, you have to be mefanet, you have to clean it. In order, that's what we say in the beginning of Pesukah de Zimri, I'm reading Mizam and SP. I, by the way, I think that there's another kavana in Hareini Mizam and SP. And that is, we know, Vani Svilosi Lecha Hashem Eis Ratzen. And I, my prayers to you, Hashem, should be in a time of favor. What's a time of favor? So we know, for example, a woman lights candles. She creates with her mitzvah a shasa kosher, and then she could ask something. Or like Reb Zilberstein says in the Tufchi Yabiu, if a person is walking in the street and he turns away from something immodest, he did the mitzvah, so then you could ask for something. If a person uses his mouth before davening for something nice, he says something nice to his wife in the morning. It's so nice to wake up to you. 
You know, it says, marpe. The words of the wise are healing. Then, 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 then is, it's an ace ratzen. It's so interesting because Manchester Shiva had a minig that he used to bring Negevasa to his daughter in the morning. So the daughter says, Abba, Tati, I could bring, take it myself. So he said, please, when your mother was alive, I used to bring her a coffee. And that was the fulfillment of Ani, but Tzedek, Echa Zaponecha. I want to appear before you at a Tzedek. I'm sure when he bought his wife a coffee, he said something nice to her. So that's also an example of Areni Mazaman Espe, getting, getting the mouth ready. Now it's so interesting because in this week's Pasha, we have the famous Balaturim. It says about the family of Binyamin, Lishfufam Mishpachas Hashufami, Lechufam Mishpachas Hashufami. Now, what's extraordinary about this Pusik is that every letter in the Pusik has a, every word in the Pusik has a pay. Lishfufam mishpachas ashufami, lechufam mishpachas achufami, every letter has a pay. What's the significance? Says the Balaturim, because Binyamin had a pay. He had a peh, he had a mouth. He knew what happened with Yosef. Yet for 22 years, he didn't tell his father. He had control over his mouth, although, why? Because he didn't want to speak Lashon Har about the brothers, and he didn't want to cause his father, the Tsar. But he had control. He was watching his father suffering. He had such control over, over his mouth. And it's also known that every shavit had a stone on the Choshen. The stone of Binyamin was Yashpei. Yashpei. Yashpei, again, is Yeshpeh. What a mouth he had! He knew about Yosef, and for 22 years he held it in and he didn't reveal it to his father. And it says that because of that, the Kodesh Kedoshim was brought, built in his chedr. Now it's fascinating. The Gemara tells us in Bava Basra that there are four people that died only by Ityo Yishol Nachash. They died only because of the Gezeira of death to mankind. They never sinned. And one of them was Binyamin. So when it sings the praises of Binyamin, you would think the Kaddish Kedosh was built in his chalik because he never sinned. But no. He had a mouth. Now this is also fascinating. You know, when you talk about somebody, he has some mouth. So usually we say it's a pemapic magolius. It's, it's somebody who says a lot of nice drushes, a lot of good lessons. Or maybe it's somebody that, like you used to call Rabbi Yaakov, the Kluger Yid, the Baleitza. He gave good Eitzes. We see that, what does it mean, yesh peh, what a mouth? Even more than what it says, it's what it doesn't say. The control. And Kodesh Kedoshim, that, that comes from having a control over the mouth. If you think about it, that's what the Pasuk says. It's not what you say. Even the smart thing. Guard your tongue from speaking evil. That's, that's yesh peh. That's, that's some mouth. The, the premium we put in Yiddishkeit even more than what we say is what we hold back from saying. It's a really am an amazing lesson. You know, all the way at the end of the fifth parak of Pirkei Avis, it says, Ben hey hey Oimer, Lefum Tzara Agra. So there's many lessons what this means. The simple lesson is, is that according to the hardship, 
is the reward. If you found it hard to stay up and join the Zoom tonight so late, at 10 after 10, phew, mefum tzara agra. It also means lefum. Lefum is pume, is the mouth. Lefum, tzara, there's distress. The churban of the base of Mikdash, what happened to the Meraglim, they all died in the Midbar. The mouth could bring tzara and agra, a tremendous reward. Tzara, tzvila. But there's another pshat. Lefum tzara. According to the tsar for a sin, we get to understand the agra, the reward. In Yushalmi it says, it's a Yushalmi in Peya, it says that the three cardinal sins are Avaidazara, Gila Arayas, and Shvihazdam, idolatry, immorality, and bloodshed. And then it says, Veloshin Hara Keneged Kulam. Veloshin Hara is equal to all three. It's, a, it's, a, it's an unbelievable statement that Veloshin Hara equals idolatry, murder, and immorality. Now, if that's true about the, the negative, then imagine the positive of holding back. How much that is. That's this lesson. You want to know the stone of Binyamin is Yosh Pei. You want to know why the Kodesh Kedosh the holiest place on earth was in the Chalik of Binyamin? Not because of what he said. It's what he didn't say. It's what the Vilna Gain says in the Geras Hagra. How does one merit the reward that God created but hid because Risham can't have it? Shem have a lot of things. They have the Riviera. They have sun-drenched beaches. They have pleasures of women. But the Aragonas, the hidden light, that they can't have. That Hashem hid away from the Risham. The guy says, we are to the Aragonas when we hold back from saying the That's Kiddush Kedashim. That's a tremendous, we call this share for the Shabbos table. This is something to speak about by the Shabbos table. This is something to tell the children, you know, three times a day, we ask Hashem for protection from one Avera. We don't ask Hashem to keep us from not eating kosher. We don't ask Hashem to keep us from being Michal Shabbos, even though it's very hard to keep Shabbos. A lot of love us. We don't even ask Hashem to protect our eyes. In, in the hedonistic society, we could understand, we say, Hashem, guard my eyes. We don't do that. We do remind ourselves, but we don't ask Hashem, God, help me. But three times a day, especially today where we have weapons of mass destruction, we could put something on, on, in an email, Twitter, Instagram, we can put something on, on Facebook or wherever. And that goes out on the whole world and you can't even retrieve it. You have to pray. Shem should protect us. In the merit of our watching our mouths, Hashem should bless us with everything good in this world and our gun is in the next world. Again, we thank the Rubin family. And uh, if people want to sponsor a share, 718-916-3100, rmmwsi at aol.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a wonderful Shabbos.